uh, the number. Yes, they are. Hello again. Video number two. Uh, just finished the Honor All Men video, which has not been uploaded yet. But um, uh, this video is going to be a quick little video. Um, it was asked a question um, by a dear local sister. And going to answer this question. Um, and uh, to you, dear sister, uh, any more questions, uh, feel free to ask. The, the, and the videos there, the emails are there. You can email me, okay? But please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we're going to be looking at. Read along with me. Be able to research the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me because the mouth goes quicker than the brain, and the brain goes quicker than the mouth. Okay? Read along with me. Proverbs 1. Verses 20 on to verse 23. Wisdom, fear of the Lord, crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She. Wisdom in Scripture, we've talked about this before, is equated onto a beautiful one. So our little finite minds can get it, okay? She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools who say in their heart there is no God, hate knowledge. Knowledge, knowing something. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Knowledge is the byproduct of wisdom. Which one? Okay? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my lowercase s spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Okay? And before we get, I, I have to read your question aloud here, sister. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 32 and 33. Excuse me, just had some pistachios. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 32 and 33. And the spirits of the prophets, lowercase s, that's important. One that is imparted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Oh, okay, you're claiming to be a saint? And you're preaching out of the scripture, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna check you out. I'm gonna check you out. Oh yeah. Check me out. Check me out. For God, sister, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. as in all churches of the saints. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Now, i, I got to use my little health phone here. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm not going to reveal the sister's name or anything, but she left a comment, and okay. All right. Uh, I'm not reading the whole comment, but I, I, here you go, sister. My question is, can God give two people different answers even if they prayed the same thing? Okay. Uh, talking about how two of you prayed. Um my friend and I prayed the same prayer in different words, but meaning the same thing. And she got a completely different answer than I did. And I felt it was all wrong. Maybe it's just me. I don't know anymore. I need help. Please and thank you. Okay. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Man is fallible. 
Scripture is right. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 7. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the capitalist spirit, the Lord Himself, in the bond of peace. There is one body and one capitalist spirit, one God, not three. Okay? Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Truth is truth. Truth is truth. Okay? Absolutely. Truth is truth. If, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. We want verses 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom, what wisdom? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee, to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. A brother and I, we could read the same scripture and get two different things. That's possible. Does that come from the Lord? Or is that our fleshly interpretations? Hmm? That, rather, is what happens more often than not. Because what is the deciding factor? The scripture itself. That's when you need to compare scripture with scripture. Because you could read one verse. A brother in you or a sister in you could read the same verse. It's like, well, I got something different. Well, I got something different. How do you determine which one is accurate according to scripture? The scripture itself. That's when you get, it's like, okay... Okay, well, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Uh, John chapter 16. John chapter 16. You know, if there's a question of a meaning of Scripture between brethren, what is the, what is the deciding factor? The Scripture itself. Uh, John chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of ah! judgment. Wow. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more of, oh my goodness, judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the capital S, Spirit of Truth, and the Lord is that Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Uh, what do we read in verse 14? He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. And shall shew it unto you. So who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? The Lord. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. If you guys are having a question about... Now, if it's something about an individual prayer, that could be a little bit more tricky as far as 
how things go. But when it, for example, if if you read scripture, if you read scripture, and you get one thing and your sister gets another thing, it's like okay, I got this, you got that. How do we? What? Which? How? What? What's going on? That's when you get into the scriptures because God is not the author of confusion, but is of peace. Okay? Okay, you have to remember that. Also, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 under verse 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost the scripture itself is truth what could happen what does is the difference between instruction and righteousness and doctrine and for that, dear sister, um, uh, writing the video link down, which is on the other chapter uh, um, channel, uh, there is a difference between doctrine and instruction and righteousness. For example, you read the Old Testament. Doctrinally, doctrinally, when you read something in the Old Testament, usually doctrinally it is for that specific dispensation. But you and I as a saint can read that in the Old Testament and apply it for our instruction in righteousness for us today. Okay? That is where a differential can appear. Okay? For example, you could read something in the Old Testament that says something very specific. That it's like, look, that's obvious. But that's for doctrine in another dispensation. How do you apply that for us today? Instruction in righteousness. Okay? That happens. That happens. That happens quite a bit. You know? You read something in the Old Testament. It's clearly uh, aimed, pointed, doctrinally, dispensationally, unto the Jewish people. You read the prophets. But how do you take something that is doctrinally and dispensationally for another dispensation unto the Hebraic Jewish people but apply it to us today to instruct us in how to walk according to his righteousness. There's the difference. There's the difference. Truth, dear sister, is truth. You pray, to, you pray for the same thing and you get two different answers? What saith the scripture? Now, in your comment, and if you want it, it you email me. Don't email, okay? You want to get specific, get specific. But you weren't really specific. But point is, you two pray for the same thing and you got two opposing answers. How do you know which one is which? How, how, how do you know if one what comes from the Lord and what is of flesh? Right here, sister. Balance both of what was given apparently right here okay if you need a little help with that email me okay might take a while to get to your email if you do just to let you know i, tell, I say that to everyone i'm kind of bad at that okay but if, if if that's the case you know this is where you decipher these things okay this is the deciding factor a brother and I, a sister, a couple of sisters, they can have a dispute, a disagreement on something, whatever. Here's the deciding factor, the scripture. Okay? What you can do, dear sister, is take what was given on either end and put it to the test of scripture because God is not the author of confusion. Okay? And if you are confused, okay, take the responses, whatever it was, Balance them off of Scripture. Is it so, were the responses in line dispensationally for today? How do you know? How do you know? Okay, how do you know? 
Is it going to be to a, something that is pertinent in the Old Testament and trying to apply it today in something that isn't doctrinally applicable for us today? Hmm? Stuff like that. You go to the scripture. Okay? Where specifically, what specifically, you did not say. How do you, how do you know? Well, I got one thing, you got another. Well, which one's, which one's according to the will of the Lord? Find out. Because that sister, you need help with that. You, how do you, my emails are available. Okay? Also, too, there are other brethren who can help you as well. Okay? All right? All right? But you got to remember, too, go to Daniel chapter 12. Scripture is the deciding factor, period. Okay? And you run into that kind of stuff a lot with what it sounds like you were describing with the Pentecostal thing. I'm, I, 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 I'm not saying that anything about anything. But it's like, well, I pray, we prayed for the same thing. Pray for the same thing. But I got one thing, you got another. Obviously, the two views from both of you are doing this. Obviously. Obviously. Which one is of the Lord? Is are, 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 are either of them of the Lord? How do you find that out? You go here. Now, like I said, if you don't know where to go with that, get a hold of me. But, but see, the Spirit of Truth, He will guide you into all truth. Lord, that's so what you do, sister. Lord, shh, answer this for me. I, I don't know. Show, show me in your word, Lord. Show me the, give me the, he will. He will. He will. He will. Because, uh, before we read in Daniel, oh, what does it say in the book of James? What does it say in the book of James? Okay. What does it say in the book of James? Verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and, he, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're saved. You're a saint. The Lord lives in you. Okay, you have these... You have this thing going on, put it to the Lord and wait. Like I said, you, 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 you want help with that? If I, if, if, if I, of all people, could help, what you, you know, get a hold of me. Okay? Go ahead. Any of you. Okay? If you can, Lord willing, will. If you can't, then it's like, sorry, I don't know. Let's find out, though. Okay? But see, another thing you got to remember, the scripture is always where you go. Always, always, always. You're in prayer. You get something. Bounce it off of scripture. You don't know how to do that? Ask the Lord. He will lead you. He will guide you into all truth. Okay? You need help with on that direction? Get a hold of a brother. Okay? Get a hold of another sister. Okay? All right? Daniel chapter 12, verses 2 and verse 4. But what happens? See, the Spirit of truth, He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay? Truth is truth. The Scripture is the deciding factor. What happens is the difference between doctrine and instruction and righteousness. And our enemies, dear sister, blur that distinction. Because a lot of people don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Because they like to jumble everything together and say that it's all written to me. It's not all written to you. It's written for you, but it's not all written to you. Okay? So there's a difference between instruction and righteousness and doctrine. Okay? And like I said, there will be the in the description box... The video where we go over that in great detail. I'm not going to get into it in this video, okay? But the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus Christ, is the deciding factor who lives in you. 
He will guide you into all truth. The response, number one, number one, don't worry about whoever it was who came up with the opposing answer. First and foremost, what you do, sister, is like, okay, I prayed about this one thing, she got something else, and I got something else. You, sister, it's like, okay, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. Lead me and guide me into all truth. Please, give me the answer. And wait until he does. Okay? Wait until he does. Okay? All right? All right? Because remember, like what uh, the Lord said unto Peter when he's when Peter's like, hey, what's he gonna do? What did the Lord say? When the Lord's like, hey, don't don't worry about him. You 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 and I, you don't don't worry about him. Same thing. Don't worry about what she got. First, worry about first. Don't worry, but first, be like, okay, there's a conflict here. I prayed about something. Now I'm going to see. I need to see if it lines up with what you have said. Okay? If it doesn't, then that's a different story. Then it's like, okay, all right? All right? That, and that doesn't mean that you're not a sister at all. I mean, okay, there are things like that. We can pray about certain things and get something, and it's like, wait a minute, that, that doesn't line up. Where'd that come from? Okay. And in prayer, it seems like whenever you're in prayer, devils, devils will attack you when you're in prayer. Any saint out there, you know that. You can be in prayer, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you'll get a memory totally not applicable to prayer or anything. It'll come out of nowhere from something that happened like 20 years ago, and it's like, what, what, wait, wait, whoa, where did that come from? Where did that matriculate from out of my mind? I'm in prayer and fellowship with the Lord, and all of a sudden something that I wasn't even thinking about for years comes out of nowhere. And that kind of thing happens. That kind of thing happens. Okay? Daniel chapter 12, verses 200, verse 4. Scripture is the deciding factor. You don't know where to go about it. You want it. You want a little bit of help. Get a hold of me, okay? But if you don't, you want it. Bless your heart. Not in the southern way. Uh, it's between you and the Lord. Find out first if what was given to you was actually of the Lord, okay, through the Scripture. And if it is, great. Then go say like, okay, come here. This this is what this is what was given me in the scripture okay let's balance what was given you in the scripture okay and if it doesn't line up that does not mean that you're lost or whatever that does not mean that okay that doesn't there have been times when I prayed for things and it, it, praise the Lord they didn't come to pass I thought I was in the right shoe but it's like, uh, wait a minute, no, I wasn't, okay? See, we're fallible. We make mistakes. This is infallible, sister. This is, where, this is where you balance everything. You go to this. You go to the authorized version, okay? Daniel 12, verses 200, verse 4. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Everlasting contempt. Remember, brother, you said about, well, what do we call it? It's an everlasting death. Uh, like I said, uh, I don't think everlasting death is in Scripture. Uh, but everlasting contempt is right there. Just saying, that's a little weapon. You'll, you'll get it. And they that be wise, fear the Lord, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now think about this. Knowledge shall be increased. How many books out there on the spiritual life can you, can you find? 
<laughs> quite a bit. Why is that? Because the spirit is lacking in Christianity. It's not there. Okay? You can find books on how to interpret your dreams, right? I have heard of books that there are out there by authors. It's like how to interpret your prayers and they don't use scripture. Okay? You pray about something and you get an answer. You, how do you interpret whether or not it's of the Lord? Right here. Okay? But see, again, what happens? What happens? We will pray for things that we want to be true or we think and we can kind of get off. Why? Because of our flesh. Flesh. Our spirit and soul are in this sagging skin suit. We are fallible. Scripture is infallible. Okay? And remember the admonition that it says in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, and there is only one good, and that's God. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such to turn away, the power thereof. Power of the Lord. The power of the Lord. The answer to your question, dear sister, which one is of the Lord, is in the scripture. Okay? That's where you go to. That's where you go to. And if you don't still know, keep looking. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Like I said, if you want help in that area, get a hold of me. There are other brethren out there that you can uh, that comment on the channels on the channel here that can help you. Okay. Okay. But this is where you go to. You, you two got two different answers to prayer. Okay. Is the Lord going to give one answer to one and another to another, and both be truth? God is not the author of confusion. Somebody wrong. Somebody wrong. Okay? Yes, somebody wrong. Mm -hmm. God is not going to give, for an example, truth to you and then truth to you. So that's your truth and that's your... Ah, ah, ah. No! No! That's not how it works. Somebody wrong. How do you decide... Which it is. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, there are so many things that God, knowledge is increasing nowadays, but... Why is that? Because it's trying to replace what isn't there in Christianity. And, like I said in the previous video, what gets in the way all the time? Flesh. Flesh. There, there have been times I've, I've talked with people where truth, un, absolute truth to Scripture... It's like, you know, like, dude, you're, you're not going to get away from this. Be not partakers of other men's sins. It's like, are, are you sure? It's like, black and white. Okay? You're going to do this. That is contrary to Scripture. Black and white. Okay? The Scripture is right. Okay? We, you, you ain't going to get away from that. All right? But what can happen? Well, I don't want that. I don't want that. Flesh gets in the way. Flesh gets in the way of the fellowship of the brethren 
and when you have two, how can two saved brethren not get along, not like each other? What's the problem? Every single time it's flesh. Every single time it's flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 13. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Again, dear sister, you take the answers that, that you both, that you claimed in your comment, of that you got, you put them to the test of Scripture. That is how you decipher. You know, you might, uh, you know, what, what, you know, okay, we might have a disagreement. A brother and I about a verse of Scripture. Well, I read that and I get something else. Well, I read that and I get something else. What say the Scripture? That's when you dig deeper. It's like, okay, let's compare. That's what say the Scripture. Okay? That's how you find your answer. What saith the Scripture? Okay? All right? Like I said, if you so look, well, I don't know how to go. Where do I start? It's like, okay, maybe help you with that. But ultimately, the Lord is the one who will show you. Put it to the Scripture. Okay? Put it to the Scripture. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, Chloe, that there are contentions among you. What are we reading to? Uh, where are we? Verse 13. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, or Cephas, excuse me, C, C, Fis, and I have Christ, Christ divided. Well, I feel in my heart. Don't you trust your heart? He who trusteth in his heart is what? A fool. Don't trust your heart. This you can trust. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 on verse 9. Now, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. See, flesh gets in the way. Flesh gets in the way. That's why you on your own study the shoe of yourself approved unto God. Okay, search the scriptures daily yourself. Okay, search these yourself. Put your response that you got to the test of scripture. Okay, deal with what you got first. And then it's like, okay, let, let, let's say whatever it is, the Lord shows you in scripture. It's like, okay, you're, thank you, praise the Lord. Then it's like, okay, what did you get? Contrary to everything that the Lord showed me in Scripture, rightly divided. That way it's like, hey, you know, you didn't, well, I believe in my heart. It's like, hey, wait, did, what say the Scripture? The script, I, I don't care. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are ye not, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who, is, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted. I have planted. Apollos watered. See that, sister? See that? See that? See that? See that? But God gave the increase. God gave. So then neither is he that planteth anything. Neither he that watereth. But God that giveth the increase. In the spirit of truth. 
That's in you, sister. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Now he that planteth and that watereth are one. Yes, both saints. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. And also, too, let's read in Acts chapter 15. Uh, we're looking at these examples so that you know that, so it's like, okay, whenever you get this thing happens like that, okay, you pray about, you pray about something, and then you get an answer, and, and then, but you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I prayed for that, and here it is, but whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. It's like, you and I prayed for the same thing. Uh, I, what, what did you say? What did you say? Um, you prayed for the same thing, but you used different words, right? Is that what you said? I, I beg your pardon. I be, I wasn't I wasn't going to dare show this on that uh, what you might call it because this this is a, a thing. Okay, let me see. Come on, shut up. <laughs> Talking to me here. Um, let me see. Question. My question is: Can two people? Can two? Can God? My question is, can God give two people different answers even if they prayed the same thing? They prayed the same thing. Okay? Truth is truth. Okay? Is he going to be give two versions of the same truth? No. Truth is truth. Okay? One might have prayed for one thing, and, and the Lord might have been answering us like, uh, no, and you, yes. Okay? And that, yes. But... Okay. Long story, not gonna. Yes. Okay. My friend and I prayed the same prayer in different words, but meaning the same thing. Okay. And she got a completely different answer than I did. Different words, but you were praying for the same thing. So. So. Different words, same thing, two different answers. I could see where that could could lead to that. Again, beloved, how do you decipher, how do you find the answer to that? Put what you were given to Scripture. Period. Period. But beware of the thing of flesh getting in the way. That's why we're looking at this. Because in Acts chapter 15, verses 36 on to verse 41, again, flesh gets in the way. Here we have two saved brethren with two opposing viewpoints, both with valid sides to the argument, but ultimately the Lord was on the side of who? Paul. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. The guy who left them, who wanted to go home. Okay? He, he skipped out of there. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. But Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder, one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and foot out of joint. And as Christ has forgiven you, forgive them, okay? And, and it's not that, you know, it's not to forgive to be forgiven, okay? Christ has forgiven you, you got a problem with a brother, forgive him. It's not a requirement for salvation, okay? But see, that's the thing, both sides of the argument. Paul was saying, hey, it's too early to trust him. Barnabas, well, I trusted you. 
I gave you, I came to you, I found you, right? Let's give him another chance. Come on, let's do this. And Paul's like, no. See, both sides were valid. They were. They were. That they both had valid arguments. But and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. After this, you only hear a fleeting reference unto Barnabas. Except if you go to the uh, apocryphal book of Barnabas, right? <laughs> yeah. The Lord was the deciding factor. How does the Lord be the deciding factor for us today? The scriptures. The scriptures. Paul and Barnabas had two valid, excuse me, had two valid arguments. But one of them was not the one, what the Lord had chosen. Today, the same thing, sister. Put your answer, put your questions here, and the Lord will answer you. That is how I will answer. That's how I answer your question, dear sister. If you want to get specific and you want a little bit more help with this, go ahead. Get get a hold of me. Get a hold of me. Uh, get, get a hold of the brethren. Okay. Get a hold of the brethren. All right. Uh, Brother Alexander, uh, and also. Um, uh, the, the dear young brother from Croatia. They can answer your questions, okay, very easily as well, okay. But they're going to tell you the same thing. They're going to tell you the same thing. Here's where you look for your answers, okay. Like I said, sister, you have any questions, get a hold of me. The emails are there. If not, Lord lead you and guide you into all truth, okay. So that's how I'd answer that question. Love you guys. See you in the next video. Have a safe weekend.